Well, hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining me on another whiskey review. Um, first of all, I wanted to apologize. It has been a bit of a delay since our last get together, um, but you know, life gets in the way from uh, uh, in the way of, of whiskey and rum and spirit drinking from time to time. So, what are you going to do? Uh, anyways, so as you can see again, we are here in the uh, the man cave. Um, I'm having a little bit of an issue with the pixelation. Um, I have overhead pot lights right here that I'm actually not using because it just totally drowned me out. I take those off and I, I thought I'd throw on the, the lights here. So don't get distracted by this laser light show we got going on back here. But that's that's pretty cool, you got to admit. Those are just some of my some of my good friends. Um, <clears throat> and we'll actually get to those probably probably next year. I'll give you kind of a quick scam scan around the room. But um, yeah, again, I apologize apologize about the pixelation. Uh, we'll do my best, and we'll I may move around this room a bit at some point. But uh, let's get right to the review. Uh, today we're actually I guess we're about a month late at this point, but uh, we are going to do another Irish whiskey review. And this is an Irish whiskey I've been wanting to taste for some time, and that whiskey being. Tullamore Dew Phoenix. Um, this is supposedly, as you can see right there in the label, a limited edition bottling. Now, limited edition is oftentimes a very subjective term. So I'm not exactly sure how many bottles they made. Uh, I can tell you this. Um, I hadn't seen it for quite some time. I actually ordered this online before it started coming out in stores. But since then, I've seen it... Um, you know, several times um, at, at pretty common liquor stores and, and even grocery stores. Um, but the story behind Phoenix is, as you can see, somewhere here. There we go. That is actually the official town crest of the town of Tullamore in, in Ireland. Uh, there was actually a great fire in the year 1785. And that fire occurred because um, they had a ceremonial hot air balloon launch. And in that process, the hot air balloon launched, um, got caught on a, uh, like a chimney, like a smokestack, and crashed and caught on fire. Now, about a third of the town of Tullamore at the time burnt to the ground. Um, it took years and years for the town to, to build back up. And when they did, they did it much better and bigger um, so much so that they actually nicknamed Tullamore the uh, Paris of the Midlands uh, of Ireland. So kind of a cool story. Um, so uh, within 50 years of that, they actually built the, um, the Tullamore Dew plant on the exact grounds of where that, you know, that, that tragedy occurred. So kind of a cool story about how we get this, this phoenix, you know, rising from the ashes. And another thing that I think kind of uh, attributes to the name is that it's very rare for Tullamore Dew. It's 55% uh, alcohol. Um, they also do a really nice job on these, these new bottles. They actually show you right here. So that's bottle 13 of whatever that is. 15,458 bottles. Kind of a cool feature. Um, this is also a, uh, a non-chill filtered uh, bottling. Tullamore Dew, um, except for... My single malt, which is one of my favorite of uh, their bottlings, uh, really specializes in uh, blended whiskeys. And this is another example of that. So what they did is they blended uh, a grain, um, a malt, and a pot still, which is a very traditional Irish whiskey, to come up with this. Um, they then stored it in sherry casks, uh, Oloreso sherry casks. Uh, they stored it for an additional two years from what they uh, typically do uh, to create this very unique, uh, very potent Tullamore Dew Phoenix. So no further ado, let's go ahead and crack into this. Uh, as I'm opening up this bottle, I wanted to give you a, a bit of a teaser on what we're going to be talking about in the future. Um, the next review, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, unless it's delayed much more, will be a, um, if you watch a show called Dangerous Grounds, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Todd Carmichael who runs a, a company, a coffee company out of Philadelphia. And the show is amazing. It's about coffee. And he actually is going to be, uh, not going to, is producing a coffee-infused rum. And it's this very, very special 
rum uh, he sourced from India calls it, um, uh, I can't, Malabar Monsoon. And uh, the whole episode of this Dangerous Ground show, the last, last episode, was about him trying to source this bean that has a very sea salty flavor because of the method they dry the bean. Uh, he then infuses it into a rum that's got that kind of that sweet, salty, uh, it sounds amazing. Really looking forward to that. I promise I'll review that just as soon as it arrives in the mail. Um, if not, we're going to jump into some other rums. With the, with the weather warming, I figured, you know, that was kind of appropriate. So, without further ado, you know what? I really am a big fan of the packaging. We always talk packaging. And to me, this is no exception. I think it's a beautiful package. Very nice cork. It shows the, uh, the year there. And let's just jump right into this. Pour a dram into the Glen Karen. Color wise, you know, I'm thinking a medium, medium uh, copper brass, uh, very golden ambery color. Very, I would say, a standard uh, Irish whiskey color. On the nose, I'm hit with a little bit of pepper. Now that could be because of the uh, the higher strength uh, of the bottling. A faint, faint uh, nutty, woody flavor, but you're not getting the oak uh, because the the casks that they that they do this in is not an oak. You're not getting oaky, which is good. I don't like an overly wooded uh, spirit. More of a um, like a sweet sweet fruit. Dark fruit flavor. Um, and the good news is, from, from what I understand, again, you know me, guys. I really like to taste things for the first time. From what I understand, we get a nice kind of an oily finish because of that pot still. And that's a, that's a flavor profile that's really growing on me for whatever reason. So I'm really excited to try that. The legs are nice and long, how they should be there. Get a look there. All right, without further ado, let's give this a shot. Ooh, I tell you what, you taste the increase in alcohol. Pepper. You get the tingling of the tongue in the back of the throat because of the potency, the very warm, lasting finish. Um, you know what, Phoenix is a perfect name for it because you do, you get that burn. Uh, you get that burn, so it's a really cool parallel. You also get um, um, some very kind of bitter notes, but they're not, they're not unpleasant. I'm trying to put a finger on maybe how I could describe that to you. Give me one last shot here. Almost, um, almost metallic, and I know that sounds a little bit derogatory, um, it's not, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's unique, uh, of all the Telemore Dews that I've had the opportunity to sample, it is the most unique, um, I'm not sure it's my cup of tea, uh, to be honest with you. I'm I'm a I'm a wee bit disappointed, but that doesn't mean it's not a great uh, great whiskey. Um, just kind of you know that's what we've talked with this several times. That's what's fun about tasting. Everyone has their own their own you know um, preferences. To me, it's a little too like I said, a little too hot. Um, that's that's probably the best way I can sum it up. It's just. You talk about getting hot pipes, you really get that with this. It's a very aggressive, um, yes, that's, that hits a nail on the head. 
You also get uh, the second, the third time I, I sipped that. You also get um, how would I describe this? Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit rusty here for you guys. I, I guess what I would call it uh, is a um, kind of like a a, a char grilled flavor, like. Like, you know, if you scrape, um, you know, the, 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 the burnt stuff off of like a burnt piece of toast, you get that. Um, and again, that's why I think the name is absolutely spot on. So uh, there it is. That's my review for Telemore Dew. Um, Phoenix, spicy, aggressive, warm, peppery, hot whiskey. Grade-wise... I don't know. Again, very subjective. I'll give it a six. Uh, very nice spirit. Before we go, one thing I wanted to show you is a product called Private Reserve. This is a wine preserver, and I'm not being paid by these people. Wine preserver, but it also works for spirits. So basically what they do is they take uh, three uh, inert gases, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and argon. And basically, as you can see, I have a pretty wide collection, and that's not all. Um, so I just opened this bottle, and I, I may finish this bottle 10 years from now. I, I mean, honestly, as soon as you open it and expose a spirit to oxygen, you're allowing some issues to come up. Um, you know, oxidation really will start to affect the spirit over time. What this does is it basically provides a blanket between your, your, your seal at the top of the bottle and actually where the oxygen is meeting your spirit. Flavorless, odorless, harmless. Um, and this is, how you, this is how you do it. Let me adjust my camera here for a second so you can see what I'm doing. That's good enough. So you pop the top and you give it a little one, two, three. Boom. Now, this guy's gonna hopefully last me uh, for many, many years. So that's a really cool uh, thing I would suggest. Sorry about that, guys. Really cool thing I would suggest if you do have a lot of bottles and you're looking to really save some, you have one or two bottles you want to savor for years and, you know, use it for special occasions, you might want to look into this. So until next time, thank you very much again for joining me, everyone. Um, glasses up, and we'll see you soon for hopefully some very delicious rum reviews. Thanks again.